everyone. Today I'm talking to Rona Geffen, uh, a level two multi one to one student with us who is a sound healer, a producer and a sound researcher. She qualified with us a few years ago and is here to tell us all about the latest research she's doing. Hi, Rona. Hey. Okay. How are you? I'm really good. Good, good. Yeah. So I hear you've been doing some research on how vocal toning can affect people in a group setting and how it can affect the wider group of people as well as ourselves. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so I recently released a research about how people use their voice, apparently using chakra toning sounds while intuitively while they dance in raves and parties. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and this apparently from the results and answers of people, this creates a kind of communal effect. So people express themselves and it encourages other people to express themselves. And actually they're all like activating their chakras and inner subtle energy body. Wow. Wow. And how did you how did you study that? Like how many people did you have? at the festival um how did you get them to get involved and how did you observe what you were looking to observe so at first when i was doing the course with the sound healing uh, academy i've know we learned about chakra toning sounds and then i thought like wait these are sounds that i know from raves and when we dance in parties i know people i know myself for the, be producing these sounds while i dance and i was very interested if this is like actually a thing so I wanted to properly like measure it, being a researcher of sound. Um, so I created a questionnaire and I had a show in Ozora festivals two years ago in summer 2019. And then I asked them, of course, if it's okay that we ask some participants of their experience of this thing. And they were very collaborative. Um, so in Ozora festivals, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. It's a huge festival. It was a huge festival, you know, in 2019 when festivals mm -hmm. when we get our festivals <laughs> and gatherings were still a thing. But um, and it's really um, nothing but respect for the people creating it, for their love and you know the way they approach music. And then I just went with a computer and started asking people in the festival if they want to answer a questionnaire about their experience they have while they're dancing and some people agreed some didn't so we asked them and then i had 45 uh, people i think answer in the festival and then i uploaded the same questionnaire online and had another about 40 people answering uh, online and so then we had a, a overall it were 96 people that answered this questionnaire on their okay. experience of how they use their voice while they're dancing in raves and here other people use their voice while they're dancing. Brilliant. So the people in the festival, how did you observe them? And did you have anybody there to help you observe or what, what was it that you were looking for? So I wasn't, I mean, when people dance in a festival, I know for myself, I wouldn't want to like start answering a questionnaire while I'm dancing, but I approached people when they were, you know, in the, um, like restaurants and the festivals or just chilling. It was also hard because it was done on a computer and online. So we had to find a place where there is internet <laughs> connection in the middle of, you know, a valley. Um, yeah, so I just approached them. And then we also checked uh, how often they go to raves, how, because some people had, you know, tens of years, like they were going to raves for 20, 30 years. So of course they had let's say more experienced than people that have been going to raves for two, three, five years. But also one of the very interesting observations of the research was that a lot of the goers in the festival were actually people, you know, because usually it's considered that people that go to raves are very young, like under 20 maybe, so 20 or under 20, but more than 60% were over 60, uh, sorry, over 30, and more than, uh, I think, 30% were over 40. So, yeah. and we even had a few people like in the 60s and 70s just joined. Brilliant. Yeah, like engaging in this kind of dancing as a community, something yeah. that never gets old. And so the sounds, 
like we teach this on our course as well. So there's sounds that correlate which, with each chakra. Yeah. So were you finding that there was one sound or one tone that people were using more than others? Or was there, was there something that was uh, consistent that you were seeing? Yeah, so people had, uh, asked, were asked to answer which of the... So I gave them a multiple choice of all the chakra toning sounds according to each chakra and then other sounds. And we definitely see that people uh, relate most to chakra toning sounds and the most from that to the sacral chakra. Um, okay. So the O and U. Um, so I think like from a multiple choice, over 20% in general are relating to the sacral chakra next, which makes sense because they are dancing and they're activating their pelvis. So it makes sense that yeah. they express yeah. this part. And there was another thing that I noticed from your paper. You were saying um, uh, this kind of mirroring that you noticed, uh, mirror neurons process that you called it, and how, um, yeah, could you tell me a bit more about that? Because that's not something that I've heard about before. So mirror neurons is an effect that is known from um, neuroscience, let's say, where people, you observe something and it creates an effect of mirror neurons in your brain and you kind of imitate or react to this um, action that you see or hear. So there are visual mirror neurons and audio mirror neurons. And with visual stimuli, you usually need both the target and the reason to affect, to react to it. But with audio mirror neurons, you just need the, the stimuli. So you just need to hear it and it immediately um, creates this effect, this effect of mirror neurons with you. Wow. So this is also what we see in the research that people, they don't need a reason when they say that when they hear other people shout in a in a rest in a festival or in a, when they dance it creates an effect it's they feel more encouraged to do the same to express yeah. themselves using their voice so we see that over like the majority of people are more than moderately uh, encouraged to react also with their voice when they hear other people so they yeah. don't need like a real reason you're making me miss festivals, Rana. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. That was really, really fascinating. Um, we do have a um, link to your document. At the moment, you're saying it's in pre, it's pre-published? It's a pre-print, so uh, not yet published in any official um, magazine, let's say. But um, yeah, but you can read the full research. Um, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say that we really see that people, so there are a few computations that I do in the, the, the paper. I compute the results that people say how they use the chakra toning sounds. So of course, these people, these are people that are unaware of chakra toning sounds. They use it very intuitive. Most of them don't even know what sound healing is. Wow. So they just, they create these sounds very intuitively. Um, and then I do a few computations of how people use these sounds as the chakra toning sounds. And we see that really the majority of people, so between uh, 70 to 90, more than 90% are reporting to use these sounds. And then hearing other people, so between 88 and, uh, um, I'm sorry, between 78 and 84, percent people report to use these sounds and between 88 and 91 percent people report to hear other people use the sound right and it still affects them yeah so but right. really the majority of people are using chakra toning sounds and not like what we refer to as other sounds uh, and i think it is really a way to self-heal and self-activate but something that is really and that's the beauty of it is, is intuitively and something that people do you know their body is just creating this effect with yeah. the music so and then they encourage other people to do the same so it's really yeah. i think it's, it's this is one of the beautiful things for when we dance together and listen to music together yeah well, let's hope healing effect yeah well let's hope we get to do more of that yes soon yeah, sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Rona. I will post a link to um, your research below. 
and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon about some more of your research. Thank you so much. Thank you.